Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, generative machine learning or generative AI as we're getting to call it kind of nowadays is a relatively new technology, but it is making incredible advances almost on a, on a weekly basis. Of course, we've got ChatGPT, we've got Bard from Google, there's a whole bunch of other technologies around. We've got image creation with Midjourney and Dali and so on, music creation. It's just really infiltrating every single part of our, of our lives. Now, Adobe has just released a brand new version of uh, Photoshop that includes generative AI built into Photoshop itself. They're calling it generative fill and it's an absolute game changer. Now someone like me, I'm not an artist. However, I do need to create sort of thumbnails for these videos, backgrounds, sometimes some graphics for things I'm explaining. And this is mind blowing, absolutely incredible. So I'm not gonna you know, talk about all the theory much now. I'm just gonna show it working. So you can just see it. I'm gonna go straight over to Photoshop and I'm gonna give you a demo and you're gonna tell me in the comments below whether you think this is amazing. Okay, let's just dive straight in. Okay, so here we are inside of Photoshop. The first thing we do with this nice photo I've got here is just remove this person here. So we can use the remove tool and just kind of uh, mark out what area you want to remove. Uh, and this, is, this works pretty well. And then we'll go on and show you some of the other magic that we can do. Okay, so there, that person's been removed. That's pretty good. Now look at this. If I now select all of this and then just move it, okay, we're just gonna move it over here a little bit like that. Okay, now I've got this huge white area on the right-hand side. So what we can do is we can just select uh, that and it's good to include some of the pixels on the left. Now here on this new context uh, toolbar that comes up, you just hit generative fill. We don't need to say anything. We just say, well, you know what to do because you can see the bit that's white and it will go away and process it and just look at the results that come up. It's quite amazing, quite amazing. Uh, and there we have it, look at that. You would not even know that wasn't part of the original photo. It actually gives you some variety. So we can click here and we can go along and just see a little bit different there, you know, the cloud and so on. All three of them look pretty good. I think I prefer the, that, yeah, that one there, that looks pretty good like that. So there's an example of how it will fill in the uh, empty space using this kind of generative AI technology that we see in all of the image creators that are around today, including the one uh, FireFi from uh, Adobe. Okay, so now we're gonna use uh, the same technology to join two pictures together. So I'm gonna add in this picture here uh, of a car, and I'm gonna make it just a little bit smaller, and I'm gonna put it over here in the middle like that, great. Now I've got this second image here that is completely un unrelated. It's not to do uh, with this at all. Um, and I'm gonna shrink it down a bit and I'm gonna kind of move it over here, match up the horizons to make it a bit easier, give it some nice space uh, to fill in. Now the key here is here you need to select all of the white areas. So I'm gonna select uh, across like that. And then I'm gonna press the shift key and select across like that this middle section here, and there's one little section there that needs to be selected. Right, now let's ask it to fill in and see if it can join those two pictures together. Again, you don't need a prompt. Oh, there we go, look at that, that's absolutely uh, amazing. So the, the road winds down like that, you can imagine it going down and across the bridge here. You've got the kind of the hill uh, here in the foreground, breaks way to the river and the, the more kind of uh, browner vegetation over there. But look at that, absolutely fantastic. There are some variations, it doesn't always do so good. Let's see, mm, yeah, I can see it trying there. That, I don't think that's quite as good. Uh, that one's possibility, I like the hill here, but I think that first one uh, is the best one. I'd also like to thank the sponsor of this video, Cali Case. It's the must-have accessory for vacation or traveling anytime you go near water. It's not just a waterproof case, it floats so you don't lose your phone. Now you can concentrate on actually enjoying your holiday, your journey, your adventure, rather than worrying about your phone sinking to the bottom of whatever lake or river it is that you are visiting. And more than that, you can still use your camera while it's inside of the case so you can still take great photos and video while underwater. Use the coupon code Gary Explains to get 15% off. Check out the link in the description below to find out more details. Okay same idea I'm going to start by adding in two uh, different pictures that uh, we're going to um, that we're going to join together. So there's this picture here that I've uh, 
that I've got and we're going to do quite a few things with this uh, in a minute and I've got this other pitch again completely not related to it uh, and it's uh, look at that but I like the fact those hills kind of match up like that so we're just going to bring that into into there like that maybe a bit smaller there we go okay and that hill line will kind of make it easier for it to add up let us just merge the visible layers now we could do more than just join them first of all we'll join them and then there's some other tricks i want to show you that we can do so we're going to select the different areas like this select that one down like that uh, and select that one across like that there we go and you've got a healthy edge here that it can go on so let's just do the fill we can get onto prompts in a minute this is why we're going to do this let's join these two together and then we will see what we can do after that it's actually once you start using prompts it's even more uh, amazing okay look at that that's absolutely brilliant those hills lined up nicely so we've got this kind of place here in the in the hillside and then you've got this pathway now the first thing i'm going to do is change this pathway into a river so i'm just going to select kind of this area like where that path is like that and just drop, connect up like that i'm going to do fill i'm going to put in here flowing water in a river Okay, and get it to generate that. So I, I want now a realistic river to appear where this path is. Well, that's nice with a log laying there. Okay, let's go back to the remove tool again. And what we're gonna do is we're going to just drop the size down of that little bit here. We're gonna get rid of some of these things here because these aren't uh, good for the scene I'm trying to create. Okay, and these ones over here as well. Okay, now I'm going to select this doorway because I want to turn this into a into a wooden doorway. So again, generative fill, and I'm going to put in here large wooden door. Hit generate. So we're going to change this now into a door that wasn't there before. There we go. I like that. Let's just look at the variation. I like that one. Oh, that would be nice. That's not what I was go going for. That's nice too, but I think this first one, right, that first one's great. And now finally, I want to add some sheep grazing here on the field. So we're just going to put there like that. And we're going to say fill and we're going to put sheep grazing. Generate that. And so, as you see, I've joined two pictures together. I have replaced a pathway with a river, and it's got a log in it. I've taken away all the modern stuff that was there. I've put in a wooden door, and finally now we're going to add in uh, some sheep grazing on the hill hillside. There you go. Look at that. That's nice one sitting down. Let's see whether it gives us another one and another one. Uh, I think I think I like that one. There we go. So there we have it. I have modified this picture significantly. And I haven't had to do anything other than just tell the uh, generative AI what it is that I want to see. And there you go, it's done it. Okay, so there you have it. So generative fill in uh, Photoshop. I'd love to hear your comments below about this technology. If you are a creator that does things in Premiere Pro, in Photoshop, this is the future. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.